Hey everybody, um, I wanted to record a, a goodbye for the year. I'm going to send it out to all my classes. Um, but I just wanted to thank you and let you know how much I appreciate. And it's been an honor and a privilege to be your teacher this year. I wanted to leave a few messages with you and then tell one more story. Okay, some things I want to remember about this year. Um, one of my goals as a teacher this year was to really focus and um, intentionally uh, create relationships with my colleagues and also with you. And um, early in the year, I went to a convention that talked about the importance of teaching emotion. And so I've been intentionally tried to create memories. And some of my memories are just... I've, I've really loved making memories with each of you. And, and, and as you're writing your end of year reflections, um, one of the questions I've asked you is to do your favorite memories. And it's just been fun to go through and see that not only you remember the crazy things in the stories, but also the lessons that came along with it. And so I really appreciate um, all the memories that we were able to create. Uh, also, another thing I'm going to remember about this year is... Um, uh, n not to bring water bottles. Uh, militarization man, uh, I think destroyed three or four water bottles this year. And also there was a few times where some water bottles were intentionally or unintentionally knocked over. And so I'm going to remember this year was kind of the year of the broken water bottle. And I think there's like six of you that have a broken water bottle because of um, antics. So if you bring a water bottle, don't sit on the front row. Uh, also, obviously this year I'm going to remember uh, COVID-19. Um, and the lessons that I've been able to learn with COVID-19, I'm grateful that I was able to spend some more time with my family um, and kids and really um, strengthen some relationships. And I feel blessed that I was able to be home with them. But really, I'm going to um, remember that it was a missed, it was a missed year, uh, half a year. Um, there were a whole many, so many lessons that I tried to portray through videos that I hope they came through, but just filling those and seeing the light in your eyes of the, yes, I'm getting this concept. Okay. Um, that's something I wish we could have had more of, but it's okay. It's okay. You can learn those life lessons from uh, more people than just me. Um, but also I'm going to remember the importance of uh, having relationships. Uh, that's the biggest thing that I've missed is being able to be with, with you. And, and whenever people say you're a high school teacher, how do you deal with those teenagers? My response is, wait, you have a job that's not with teenagers. How do you deal with adults? Teenagers are so much funner. Okay. Um, also, something I've learned is we have some systematic problems in our nation. Um, as far as um, this, this, this crisis has exacerbated a lot of the, the gaps that already existed. Um, I'm grateful that um, I've been in a position to where... Um, COVID-19, other than having to just stay home, um, I've been very, very privileged to be able to, to still have a job and where my girls can still learn and receive the help from me and, and my wife. But I recognize that that's not a privilege everyone has and that I have a responsibility to help those that are struggling and that we all have responsibilities to help those below us, uh, whether economically or um, uh, physically or whatever it is that, that we can't just focus on just ourselves, that the greater good needs to be also, um, kept in mind. Okay. And then also, and a lot of you have put this in your reflections about what you want to remember is just the faith in humanity. Um, that it seems like people are kinder to each other, that, that people are, are for the most part, um, following the advice of truth. And, and instead of trying to be naysayers, they're really going out and trying to serve each other and look for opportunities to reach out as best they can and that there's so much good in the world. And I want to remember that about this time. Now to my each individual classes. Okay, first to my ethnic studies classes. Uh, one final lesson I want you to look at when we're looking at the history of America. This is a nation of sacrifice. Okay, and that our freedoms aren't free. I know that a lot of teachers uh, say that, and I will say that. Okay, freedom ain't free, and that we should honor those people who have died for us to have our freedoms. 
And to kind of echo what Miss Murray has said, she talks about the importance of freedom that we need to honor our vets. And I would think we need to do a better job of taking care of our veterans and honoring their willing sacrifices. But let's not also forget the blood has been spilled by those who unwillingly sacrificed. Okay, the blood of the slave, the blood of the native, the blood of the immigrant who died because of our sins, but yet we can learn lessons from them. Our flag is stained in blood, the blood of patriots and the blood of patriots who didn't always receive all their rights. Okay, I want you to remember that. Also, another concept to think about is oftentimes when studying kind of history where bad things happen, we get this mindset of, oh, these victims. Okay, all the stories and lessons that we've learned this year are examples of not victims of injustices, but instead fighters. And just some of those fighters died. Okay, always, always, always be a fighter. Don't be a victim. And then finally, the biggest lesson I hope you learn from this lesson or this class is the importance of self-respect, the Fortes Catlipocas, right? Self-reflection, beautiful knowledge that comes from our ancestors. Quichli Pochli, okay? The will to act, take action. Don't just sit on the sidelines. And then finally, Sipa Toltec, where we will all transform, okay? You are beautiful, show it. You have a voice use it and you have a responsibility go do it to my education 1010 class this is always i love 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 working with you because i see such hope and potential for future teachers i can't wait for you to be the teachers of my kids and my grandkids i feel so excited that they're going to get to have you to be their teacher um just in talking about my teaching philosophy first and foremost i want you to know teaching is a service Okay, we are servants to humanity. We are servants to society. Sometimes servants aren't treated very well, but we do it because we know it's the right thing to do. Okay, also, when you are a teacher, intentionally make those relationships. Okay, there's going to be some kids that you just easily gravitate to. Don't forget those that maybe you have a personality conflict with or that doesn't agree with you. Intentionally reach out and create those relationships. Also remember when you're teaching, okay, the, the, the what's and the how's will always change, okay? The strategies and the curriculum will always be adapting. Remember your whys, but also it's important to teach emotions. Every single day when you're creating those lesson plans, intentionally, this is what my kids are gonna know. This is what my kids are going to do. And then this is what my kids are going to feel. Tell stories, make memories, make relationships. And then finally, for you, Education 1010, you are now a colleague. Okay. Um, you're Yes, you're my former student, but you're a colleague now. Okay. And I expect you to collaborate with me. Please keep in touch in this great army of educators for our great state and our great nation okay so please please keep in touch uh this isn't over okay please keep in touch and let's continue to learn from each other for my u.s history classes okay i hope you recognize the passion i have for our nation okay my two passions as far as history are the constitution and civil rights and for me those two things are the same thing and that the story of civil rights is not a story of racism but a story of finally fulfilling the dreams that our founders set forth of freedom, liberty, and justice for all. I want you to recognize the importance of finding connections, of creating, of finding compromises, okay, of being that hip nation that brings things together, the where we build walls, sorry, not walls, whoop, okay, we build bridges and not walls, okay, we find those connections, that that is the history of this nation, and that when we live in fear, we go down. But when we live with hope, we rise. Let's have hope for our nation. Also recognize that America is an experiment that requires participation. Don't just sit on the sidelines. Participate. Whatever that form of participation looks like, whether it's just the very minimum of voting. Okay. 
but honestly, it requires good civil discourse where we talk to each other, we find common ground. And even if someone disagrees with you, good, learn from them. Don't block them out. Don't live in your bubbles. Okay. Beware of extremism. Beware of conspiracies. Beware of those who go out and try to dominate through fear. Find that middle way. Then, of course, one of my favorite lessons, be it. Okay. Find yourself doing the right thing at the right place at the right time, being your right self for the right reason. And if you do that, I know that it's going to be great. You're going to live a great life. And then from your oral history report, this is uh, an assignment that I have really, really enjoyed uh, reading and learning from you. It's, it's one that I've done not for all my classes, but this year I did. And a lesson I would just want you to to think about when you came into this year, a lot of you had this mindset of I'm not good at history because I don't know names, dates, and places. Some of you still don't know the names, dates, and places, but that's just fine. But I want you to know that good historians are the best listeners. Okay. That good history or good historians are good listeners. And you can all be good listeners. Go be that family historian. Okay. Now to everyone. Okay, to everyone, and this will be my final lesson and final story of the year. I've talked in, especially in my U.S. history classes, um, but also a little bit in my other classes about the potential of this upcoming generation. The I see in you, the potential of being the greatest generation 2.0. Okay, right now your generation is yet to be defined. You can go out and you can be that next great generation. Okay. And if you remember, the thing that set them apart was they sacrificed for the next generation. They had empathy. They had experienced and lost so much. Look at their lives, right? The Great Depression. How much did they lose? How much was taken away? World War II. How much did they lose? How much was taken away? And in those formative years, they were forced to learn hard lessons. And rather than once it got easy, just lay back, they said, no, nah, whenever I see that happening, I'm going to stop it. Okay. They were not self-centered like the me generation, or you could argue my generation that kind of focuses all on doing what makes us happy. You can be more. Okay. And COVID-19, I think, is an opportunity for this. Okay. During this past two months, you've lost a lot of things. You've lost an education. I hope that you no longer or never do, not that you ever did, but I hope you don't take those education for granted. You've had to live a life of isolation. You've had to oftentimes just sit alone and try to figure things out for yourself. Some of you have went through depression. Some of you went through hunger. Okay, But I think the biggest feeling that we've all felt is this lack of connection and isolation. But in my opinion, and I know a lot of you watched the TED Talk, and it would be the last one of the TED Talk of Connected But Alone. One of the plagues of your generation, and I think it's just going to get worse, is this feeling of isolation, okay, that we're so lost in our humanity, okay? We have suicide. We have depression. We have people who feel isolated. Now, a lot of us, have never felt those things, but we are now. We now can move forward with empathy. And a story that John F. Kennedy told uh, that was a story from his family history um, that he mentions, and if you want to read the whole thing, um, it, it, he gives reference to it. But he talks about uh, in his book, The Nation of Immigrants. But he tells a story from the 1850s. Okay, in the 1850s and 60s, you got the Great Potato Famine happening in Ireland. And this is when cameras were first starting to get about. And it got so bad in Ireland where these refugees and these people were starving so bad that they, to get nourishment, they were eating grass. And there's picture taken of these starving Irish who are just dying because of lack of, lack of food. And there's pictures were sent all out. And the Choctaw Indian, their tribe, who just 20 years earlier had experienced the Trail of Tears where one fourth of them died along the way. And when they got to Indian territory in Oklahoma, they were starving. 
they had experienced struggle. And it put in them empathy. And that group of tribes who had almost nothing, they got together and they said, we can do something. And they collected all their money and they sent $170 to Ireland saying, I know this isn't much, but we've experienced pain and we want you to know that you're not alone and that the Choctaw Indian are here for the people of Ireland. That is what America is. That is what you are. You've experienced isolation and depression through this time. And if not depression, certainly isolation. Look outside yourselves and look for those who are feeling this sacrifice for the greater good, but also fight for your rights. Okay. For my juniors, I'll see you next year. This isn't over. Okay. And please come in and see me. Those of you who had me, I'm so excited for the lessons we're going to learn together next year. And if I don't have the opportunity to teach you next year, please come see me during Grizz Ops or whenever. And finally, to my seniors, you're wonderful, love you, and go you. You don't need me anymore. But no, you'll always have a teacher at Copper Hills. Stay in touch. Love you.